Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a speech about booking a tour. It's kind of a speech about what we do at the Rondo and kind of a speech about general stuff. So it might digress a little bit and go into funny areas. Um, so the first thing to address if you're kind of, if you've got a tour on the cards or you want to put a show on is what do theatres look for? What are theatres looking for? Well, I haven't got a clue. Um, I look around at, at theatres everywhere and look at what they're programming or what they say they want to program. Um, and I just think, well, actually, nobody knows. Um, and if you're a fan of film, you might have heard of the, the great William Goldman, who's a screenplay writer. Uh, and his summation of, of Hollywood was that, that same point. Nobody knows anything. Nobody knows what's going to sell. Nobody knows what's going to be a good show where you commission it. Nobody knows what's going to start out a really good idea and become a bad idea. Nobody knows what's going to start out as a bad idea and become a good idea. People haven't got a clue. And that includes me. I'm completely clueless. So um, that's, that's the first thing to say. Um, so really, I can talk about the theatre I run, the Rondo, and what we look for, what we're there for, what we try and do. Um, and it's very simple. We're looking for something good. We're looking for something interesting. We're looking for something that we might want to go and see. Uh, and going back to Andy's point about the audience, that's very much our focus. We want to do something that audiences find interesting. And it's harder than it seems, because nobody knows anything. We're all clueless. We're all swimming around in the dark, hoping that what we put on will work, hoping that what we book will be the thing that audiences want to come and see. Now, of course, we don't know that, because half the time when we book a show, what we're doing is booking on the basis of an idea, a notion, um, a piece of marketing material, a poster, a photograph, an image. Uh, we're booking something that hasn't been written, let alone rehearsed, directed, uh, hasn't had its full marketing budget spent on it. We're booking potential. And of course, potential can end up being the most fantastic thing that goes on to conquer the world. Or it can be the thing that fizzles out and is peculiar and odd and nobody likes it and it's gone. So how do we do it? I don't know. Um, the advice I can give to people trying to put things on in theatres at the moment is all very practical. Um, we've heard people talk about already today about the, the economic pressure on the arts, the financial pressure, um, and it's going to get worse. It's going to get a lot worse. The result of that is that theatres like the Rondo, um, and it's going to ripple upwards into bigger and bigger theatres, is that there's an enormous pressure on the theatres and an enormous pressure on the staff. We don't have time. I mean, one of my huge regrets about running a venue is that I don't, don't get time to go to other venues or enough time to go to other venues. I don't get enough time to see the sort of shows that other people are putting on um, and gain information. So my ignorance is getting more and more refined as time goes on. I've got a, certainly a better quality of ignorance than I had five years ago. So what that means is if you're trying to put a show on or trying to book a show, there is an overwhelming need for clarity. You need to give me the information I need, succinctly and accurately. Now, it doesn't mean to say you need to tell me everything about your show. It just means you need to tell me everything I need to know. Um, what are you doing? Now, that sounds an obvious question. If I'm going to book a show, what are you doing? Well, it can be anything. If you're doing, uh, to go back to Andy as an example, The Count of Monte Cristo, you could do that in a million different ways. It can be three people playing all the roles. It can be a hundred people playing all the roles and all the characters and uh, all the people in the crowd scenes. You could be doing it on the tiniest fringe budget with uh, a minimum amount of props, or you could for instance, build a huge waterproof stage container and do realistic sea scenes. It can be anything. But what you need to tell me as accurately as you can is what it is you're doing. And the other thing is, why are you doing it? What's the reason for doing the show you're doing? 
Now, it's just me being nosy, really, and again, trying to help refine my level of ignorance. But I like to know why people are doing a show. Is it because you think it's a great commercial idea? Brilliant, absolutely nothing wrong with that. Is it because you feel a need as an artist to address an issue that has a personal issue for you? Absolutely fine, nothing wrong with that. Are you doing it because you like it? Are you doing it because it's fun? Are you doing it because you feel you want to change the world? Tell me. I'd like to know. I'd like to know why you're doing it. The really important one is, when are you doing it? When are you doing it? That is vital for me. Um, if you come to me and say, I'd like to put a show on, I'm doing it next year, that's next to useless. When's it going to be? If you say, I'm doing a show, I'm going to do it next spring, that's a slightly better form of useless, but it's still pretty useless. Um, for me, spring starts in January and ends in the middle of April. Um, that's when my season is. So if you're going to do a show, I need to know I'm touring from the last week of January to the last week of February, um, and I've already booked up three Fridays in that, uh, and I'm going to be in Wales here, I'm going to be in Kent here, um, and this is the little window I've got of available time that I can come to Bath. That, for me, is brilliant, because then I know, yes, I can fit you in, or no, I can't. I'm not going to waste your time, you're not going to waste mine. Fantastic. Precision is really important. Now, here comes the sketchy bit. The thing I need to know as well, usually, is how are you paying for it? Um, it's really important these days to know that the show's going to go on. Um, going back a couple of years ago now, I had a spring season that was lovely. Absolutely fantastic spring season. Lots of really interesting theatres, uh, theatre companies booked in. The day the brochure came back from the printers, we had two companies drop out. And then a third company drop out a couple of days later. It's because they'd applied for Arts Council funding and they hadn't got it. Now, that's awful and, you know, it happens to everybody. What they hadn't done is told me that their booking was contingent on getting the funding. So we were kind of slightly adrift. We lose money because shows can't go on, the tours are pulled, all other theatres lose money. Uh, and then what happens, of course, is that you think, well, when I booked you last, you never showed up. Now, for a perfectly good reason, but you never showed up. Am I going to book you again? W would you guys book a company that did that? So let me know how you're paying for it. Let me know what the contingencies are and give me the choice. It might be that I say, ah, oh, okay, well, it's really good. The work you're doing is excellent. I can take a risk on you. I'm going to do that because that's the, the thing we do um, because we're ignorant, so we might as well give you a go. Um, so that's our choice then, but don't take that choice away from us. And marketing. It's really, really important um, when you're booking a show to give us the best, best example of, of whatever marketing you've got that you possibly can. Because quite often it's all we've got to go on. It's all we've got to go on is an email with a tour pack saying, this is going to be our show. Quite often we won't have seen it. Quite often we're talking to theatre companies on the other side of the country. Quite often we're dealing with theatre companies, it's their very first show. So don't ever stint on that. That's one of the most important things. If you give us something that's an arresting image with a good font um, and you know, time and effort has been spent on making it look as good and explain as much as possible with good visual impact, then we look at it and we go, OK, these guys seem to know what they're doing. They might not, but they seem to know what they're doing. If you give us, you know, th if we get through the post a scrappy piece of A4 paper that's had a couple of biro things on and a, a photo slipped in and maybe a couple of printed off images from Google search, you look at that and you go, hmm, it might be the best idea in the world, but you're not giving us the um, confidence to take a risk on it. So we probably won't. Um, know where you're going to. Um, the number of times we get massively detailed lighting designs sent through to our theatre, and it's completely useless. You've, you've spent lots of time and effort and money on producing something that we can't do for you. If you're going to uh, the main house of the theatre all in Bath, brilliant. 
do all the, the massive accurate lighting designs you can. But if you're doing a fringe tour, you've got to know that you've got to be adaptable. You've got to work with what the theatres have. And theatres, um, especially small end theatres, have wildly different um, areas of equipment and bits and pieces that you can play with or can't play with. So know where you're going to. Huge sets, for instance, huge complicated sets that take ages bolt together can look brilliant and can be essential to your artistic vision. But you've got to know that they take time and money. And probably the most important thing of those when you're touring is time. As if you know you've got to come to a venue, spend four hours building your set, two hours focusing your lights, then do your show, then take it all down at the end of it. You know, at the end of six weeks on the road, you're going to be exhausted. And you're going to have drunk all the coffee in the world. So the price of coffee will have gone up. Get organised and book early. Now, it's sometimes a little bit horrible to say, I'm going to start booking now for a tour that's going to go on uh, next autumn, for instance. You're looking a year in advance. But if you book early, if you get to venues early, then you can get a choice of the dates you want. And if you get a choice of the dates you want, it can save you a fortune in petrol. The number of companies we get that say, oh, I was in Kent last night, I'm in Bath tonight, I'm in Aberdeen tomorrow, and have a wrist with the day after. Um, and it's because they don't have the choice of dates, they, they, they booked a tour, that's what they want to do, brilliant, but they've got to go all over the country in the most zigzag way possible, and that costs a fortune. Especially if pe petrol prices go up halfway through. Um, we did have a theatre company that nearly had to pull their tour because they told us that petrol, their petrol bill had gone up 25% from what they'd um, budgeted. And that can absolutely kill you. Absolutely kill you. The most important thing, though, about booking a tour is booking the next tour. When you get to a venue, the most important thing to think about is the next time you're going to be in that venue. So behave well. Venues are run by overworked, stressed out people like me um, who get very irritated if you haven't read the contract, um, if you don't know what we expect of you and what you expect of us, uh, if you don't know what we provide and what we can't provide. So turn up, be nice, talk to people, be willing to be friendly, be willing to be helpful and know what you have to do, even if it means you have to do things like open a spreadsheet and make a spreadsheet of all your tour dates and do something unarty like that. It's really important to remember that venues are run by people and not by faceless bureaucrats, no matter how much some theatres try and do that sometimes. So the most important thing I can tell you about booking a tour is be nice. That's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. Be nice. That's a, that's a lovely motto for life, isn't it? Um, any questions for Ian at all? Any questions for Ian? Yes, sir. So, done and done the front there. We'll just get a microphone to you. If you just give us a second. Thank you. Hi there. Do you have like a general arrangement with theatre companies that come and do shows at the Rondo? Do you do you always do like a, a door split, or you know, or is it basically dependent? It, it, usually, uh, we are a venue for hire most of the time, so usually we charge a very small fee. Um, it's, it's, um, at the moment, it's £120 a night. It might go up a little bit over the next um, couple of months. But usually, it's £120 a night, uh, and plus a box office commission of 10%, which is what our box office provider takes from us. So uh, one of our aims, one of our specific aims, is to be affordable for companies. Um, so then the companies can look at setting ticket prices based on around that.